so so the parallel programming or parallel running in Triton. Uh, like there were many questions already in the, in the HackMD, like uh, I, I was given the impression that stuff will run faster in Triton and, and HPC clusters, like why why doesn't it run faster? And the, and the answer is usually like, you need to reserve the resources, uh, what your code will use, and you need to know what your code can use, and then it will run faster. So when we talk about parallel running, like this kind of like a parallel running where we uh, have multiple uh, CPUs or multiple workers, uh, there's basically two ways, there are two different paradigms. There's like this shared memory paradigm, which means that basically you get a computer, like let's say your laptop. The laptop has four CPUs or maybe maybe six CPUs or eight CPUs nowadays it's all in the same system. So you're in one system and they share the same memory. So they're in a shared memory uh, system. So there's, they share the same, like, well, uh, same uh, physical layout, physical machine. They're all there. And you can run programs so that they utilize the multiple CPUs in your laptop. Let's say, for example, the Zoom that we are talking into right now, it is probably using multiple CPUs to do like different things at the same time. Mm -hmm. And this is nowadays uh, really common for all kinds of computations. So when you're running, let's say MATLAB, when you're running R, when you're running Python, uh, when you're uh, like doing all kinds of stuff, underneath it all, it the program will recognize how many CPUs you have and it will try to utilize all of them. It will try to usually run with all of the CPUs. Mm -hmm. And like sometimes if you're running some simulator, and you notice that your laptop fan starts run rolling or like you get this kind of feeling, you know that, okay, it's now most likely utilizing all of the resources available yeah. in the system. And it does it usually without like even you know to sing it but it's and noticeable by the programmer so the yes. user may not notice but these are yes. all written exactly with the programmer saying okay here's how you can divide this mm. and these there are many ways of doing this so most commons are like multi-threaded or multi-processing so basically it means that like like let's say you start in MATLAB, you start might start the parallel pool, so multiple workers work together. Or in in Python, you might use Python multiprocessing. Or in R, you might use the parallel package or the futures package or something like that. A, or you might use multi-threading. For example, like if you're using NumPy, like in Python, underneath there there's these libraries, so linear algebra libraries mm -hmm. and uh, stuff like that. And those have been written in a way that they can utilize multiple CPUs to do the like mat matrix inversions and yeah. matrix calculations and stuff like that. For example, NumPy can use these multiple processors mm. and this is and, implemented and the in the C level in there. And the important here is to know that like, okay, you're asking for multiple CPUs. You're asking for multiple processors on the same machine. So you're asking when you're running programs such as these, you're asking mm -hmm. for multiple CPUs. There's in, in Slurm, there's two of these different requests. There's multiple CPUs and there's multiple tasks. And the task is related to the other paradigm. The, uh, like the shared memory, you ask for multiple CPUs. But then there's this MPI or message passing interface paradigm. And this is used for like these supercomputers. Like when you want to run thousands of computers at the same time, they need to be able to communicate to each other. Like what is the they usually like, let's say you have a physics program and then you split the program into smaller pieces and each piece is given to a separate uh, processors and then uh, or separate tasks. And each of these communicate with, with each other to solve the bigger problem. So in this case, they use this MPI or this message passing interface to like do the communication uh, from node to node, from task to task. And this is like the massively parallel stuff. But this is like not not something you usually like. You need to actually the pro program does need to support it. Like this is not something that is like mm. supported everywhere. Like compared to the shared memory thing, this is something that it, the pro program needs to say at its manual page basically that <laughs> MPI is working. Otherwise, it's not going to work with this. 
Right. So, so yeah. it needs to be say, said on the tin that like this is MPI, uh, like MPI working program. You can work with this with MPI. And mm -hmm. and if it does work like this, then you can run these like you can ask for multiple tasks, and they can be then put into like multiple computers, these individual tasks, and then you get like multiple, yeah. uh, like you get like really big simulations. Yeah. I guess like it says here, for example, 10 or 20 years ago, computers were not so powerful. So you had to use more MPI in order to use 10 or 100 nodes to do something. But now there's a larger percentage of work which can possibly fit on one node with 10 or 20 CPUs. So like yes. that's enough for most people yeah so uh, how do you actually like then uh call these or how do you how do you do this like uh yeah uh, and and should okay. you do this like that's a, that's a uh, hmm. uh good question so so like should you make like, it yourself yeah like like make certain like when you're running these make certain that you actually like the pro program knows what you're trying to like how many cpus you're trying to use and stuff like that because like um if if your pro program doesn't know about like uh that it's supposed to use multiple cpus or if it assumes that it can use multiple cpus when they it, it's not been reserved multiple cpus mm -hmm you might get into, get into trouble. Yeah. And SKF like, is the best tool of monitoring this kind of mm -hmm. behavior. Like a common thing that might happen is someone uses, say, R or Python multiprocessing or Paralibe, and they run it and say, okay, let's give the program four CPUs. And then the program starts running on a node and says, oh, I'm here on this node with 20 CPUs, so let's run 20 things at once but the node constricts it to using only four. So basically you have all these things, all these 20 things trying to use the same four processors and it's much more slower. Yeah, so basically it's like a, like with Slurm, you tell the Slurm, like if you scroll a bit up in the documentation, like uh, about running multi-threaded applications mm. over here, uh, a bit down. Down, was I already down. there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. no. <laughs> Above. Just in the middle. Yeah. A bit above, a bit above. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then, like, you you need to think, there's two things here happening. So first, the program needs to know how many processors it needs to use or wants to use. And then uh, the uh, you need to reserve from the Slurm NPUs for the program. Mm -hmm. These these two need to match. So basically, yeah. it's like a uh, like if if you are uh, on a Ferrari on a, on a like a like a normal city street, you can't go above the speed limit, <laughs> even though like you have the power there. And and that's basically the idea. Like you need to reserve yeah. like time at the track or something if you want to like drive really yeah. fast. And, and if you and ever how do you, yeah. And if you ever make your own program that can use multiple things, do everyone a favor and in the documentation, in the readme, wherever, write down, this is how it uses multiple CPUs and this is how it's configured. Otherwise you get people who will try to run it on a cluster and they won't know how to. And we basically have to go reverse engineer it. And well, you can tell we've done that a bit too many times. So yeah. Yeah, but for these shared memory programs, it's it's as simple like getting multiple CPUs. Like we already had it in the example that you basically say the CPUs per task, and then you just say how many CPUs you want, and then you get those CPUs. But it of course it doesn't mean that you, you the code actually uses those. So you need to use the SF to monitor whether it actually utilizes the CPUs. Mm -hmm. But but basically the reserving part is very easy. You just specify the CPUs per task. Yeah. In some cases, like in most cases, you just want to specify some like hard limit for the memory, uh, like for the whole program. But in some mm -hmm. cases, you might have this kind of like a like increasing the number of CPUs might increase the memory requirement. So let's yeah. say if, if you start separate processes or something like that. So in those cases, it might be useful to use this memory per core yeah. uh, memory requirement. But usually you want to just set this memory yeah. requirement. So basically adding one line, this CPUs per task into your program 
mm -hmm. allows it to use multiple CPUs. Then whether it uses them, that depends on the program. There are, like in the documentation, there's many examples of like how to run Python programs in parallel, how to run MATLAB programs in parallel, how to run R programs in parallel, yeah. like with this, this flag. But you need to check that documentation uh, yeah. for your specific program. And we're at about half our time now. So should we go to yeah. some demos? Uh, yeah, let's let's do, for example, this this very simple OpenMP program. Okay, so, so OpenMP is is this kind of a standard where you can like, if you're coding like C program or something like that, you can use OpenMP to to do like a for loop in parallel or something like that. So here's in the uh, it's also in the examples repository. Ah, okay. Or you can just run the command. So. Mm... This is in HPC examples master. Okay, should I change to that directory? Yeah, not the master, but. Uh, oh. That is the Open MC. Yeah. Okay, so here I am. Yeah. So. And then if you run mm, the module load, CCC. Will this work on other sites? Uh, Hopefully, it should work. Okay. Uh, it might be a different CCC then. Yeah. So there you can see, uh, like usually when you run these OpenMP program programs, you want to set this proc bind true in your script as well. Mm -hmm. and what then, does this do? So basically, this program runs, well, just says hello world mm -hmm. for multiple CPUs. Uh, so in this case, it runs on four CPUs. Uh, uh, for five minutes, and it just brings the, yeah. the, the different threads. Should I run it like this, or like? I run it like that. I guess we can run it like this. Yeah. Okay. But if you run it with S run, you can like see it like that. Oh, okay. And if you run it with uh, like a Slurm script, you see below like you just add this one line. It's it's yeah. the, like one line for the OMP proc bind if your mm -hmm. code is open MP. Like it depends on the code which do you need to set this environment variable. But yeah. the CPUs per task, that's the important part. Add this one line, you get four CPUs. Yeah. There is a question in the chat that like the maximum of number of CPUs, is it forty? And usually yes, like it's actual the actual maximum number of cores in the computer. So it, the biggest computers we have usually is like, like we have two sockets, so two physical like CPUs, and those have like 20 cores each. Yeah. So we get like 40 CPUs per node. So that is the actual limit you can get if you're using the, this memory paradigm. So the amount of physical yeah. CPUs on the machine. Okay, so now what should we do as the next example, maybe uh, it would be let's, in. yeah. yeah. Mm. But there's, I think we could. Uh, well, maybe we could. Should we look down towards exercises or something? Um, I think in our we limited might... time. Yeah, so there's I think a we question. might just go to the. Yeah. Yeah. So what in this course we're not learning how to make your own. Uh, multiprocessing or threaded programs. Um, while it's not the most complicated thing in some models, it's more than we can possibly cover in this course. So we're assuming that you have such a thing and you can um, run it. Okay. So MPI. Yeah, like uh, oh. like the, it's it's a whole kind of worms like it depends really on the program how do you do it yeah so, so for the mpi part like if your code supports shared memory uh if your program supports shared memory uh things use the memory uh cpus per task that's all you need you don't need to think about uh, or cpus per mm. uh node uh sorry cps per task uh, you don't need to think about uh, like anything else if you are using MPI code, you need to, instead of using the CPUs per task, you use the number of tasks. So if you are using MPI code, you're usually, usually using some physics code or something like that. And you, you typically load some MPI uh, 
uh, library. Uh, like we have, like these MPI libraries, they need to be installed by us because they are very like finicky and they need to be optimized for the networking infrastructure so that the <laughs> communication yeah. between the nodes is, is as fast as possible. Yeah. And how do you usually work with them is that you load the module, you compile whatever code you have. So uh, if Richard, you want to do the example okay. over there. So this one? Yes, so there's like the open MPI example over okay. there. If you run the... Mm. Mm. Let's see, where... Uh... It's in the uh, HPC examples uh, open MPI folder. Or MPI folder, sorry. Okay, uh, hello MPI. Yes. Okay, uh, so let's yeah. load some modules. This is already loaded. This needs loading. Yeah, and usually you, you let's say you have MPI code that you don't need that. I don't need this. MPI. Okay. But, but uh, below there, you can see the, let's say, compile the C version of the MPI program. Yeah, okay. So, so with MPI, usually you, you need to compile programs. You need to do stuff like for the specific MPI version that you have. Like it's very, you need to have the specific version of MPI for the code to work. Uh, so whenever you're running the code, you need to load the same MPI version that you have. And this is, the MPI is much more complicated than normal like shared uh, process. Uh, Set memory like parallelism uh, to 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 code usually, uh, but you can of course like then run with hundreds of computers. So here we see that um, we we get got uh, well they ended up in the same computer, uh, but we got uh, four of these processes running, uh, four tasks. They independent tasks and they communicate with each other through the MBI. Uh, and, and this is how, like, if you're using MPI, then use the end tasks. If you're using, uh, like, shared memory, use the CPUs per task. And yeah. don't mix, like, if you're, you can mix and match them if you're using so these so-called hybrid codes. But those <laughs> are specialized stuff. And you, like, if you don't know what they are, then I, I wouldn't recommend uh, mixing and matching them. Yeah. So if you, so, so this one, like if with the MPI, you can scale up to hundreds of nodes or something like that. Like in our uh, cluster, it's, uh, the limit is, I can't remember how many nodes it currently is, but, but in theory, like in, in, let's say CSE, you can use hundreds of nodes. Yeah. So, so it's like, like we are talking about thousands of uh, CPUs, but yeah. it's only when you have this kind of MPI uh, enabled code that mm -hmm. can scale to these lengths. Yeah. Okay. In the examples, there's like the first, like if you look at the the first example in the exercises, mm. uh, that is very good exercise. Okay. So Let's what is the difference asset. between, yeah, what is the difference between these four lines? So S run, CPUs per task. Mm. Uh, okay. So we see so, it printed it once. Yeah. So, so what, what it means that it runs, like in this case, we run the command hostname and we give the command access to four CPUs. So this is the shared memory situation. Yeah. Then what happens if we put the end tasks? So here we see that we run four separate programs. So if, if if your code understands MPI, these programs will recognize that they're MPI programs and they start to communicate with each other. But if your code is not MPI program, then they will, you will run the same program multiple times, the same identical program, and that's not what you want. You, like you, because then you will write, like you will get output errors and input errors and all kinds of, and you will basically do the same calculation four times and waste resources and uh, like you, you don't need that. So yeah. if your code doesn't use MPI, don't use end tasks ever. Yeah, <laughs> that's as simple as that. And mm -hmm. uh, let's try the number of nodes uh, again. 
we also. So if you're running uh, MPI tasks, you can specify also, you can get multiple nodes yeah. as well. And how so, many processors would this be using with four nodes? In this case, it would use four because you haven't specified the number of tasks. So okay, you need to like... also specify like usually like a uh, number of tasks per node or something like yeah. that uh, in order to get like multiple. Uh, mm, is there a task tasks per node? N tasks uh -huh. per node. But these are like, if you're using oh. MPI programs, you, That's can, too many. you can do, yeah. But yeah, like this if is you're sort running of... MPI programs. These are something that you need to worry. If yeah. you're not, then don't worry about this. And we should emphasize this is really not the good case here. You would prefer all the tasks to run on the same node because communication will be as fast as possible. Yes. So first you have to scale to one node, then start going to other nodes. But really, few people these days make it that far because it's not necessary. Okay, here we go. So we see now there's, it ran eight times on four different nodes, twice per node. And our time for parallel is almost up. Yes. So what's so, the but, summary but, here? Yeah, I'd say like like there's few things that you need to, like I, I would uh, emphasize. So after this, we can talk about array jobs. And for most vast majority of cases, the array jobs are a better option than uh, actually using parallel. Like parallel sounds fancy. It sounds like yeah. really nice that you you have like a, uh, like a, uh, so, so as an example, like, uh, like you can, if you go, in, let's say we're going to to a, to a cottage somewhere, <laughs> and we want to take stuff with us there, we can like take a really fancy Tesla and like like put that up to a brim of stuff so much that we can't even bring our stuff with us. So we have to drive a fast Tesla to the cottage, just drop our stuff there, go back to our home, take more stuff, and take that to the cottage as well. So we have to do two rounds with a really fast car, or you can like get a really, like two cars that are not as fancy, but you can fill those up and then you can drive the two cars uh, and uh, do it everything in like one go. So, so basically sometimes the speed isn't everything. It's about like how, mm -hmm. how much you can bring with you. Uh, maybe the analogy isn't that clear, but, but basically, sometimes it's not worth optimizing the speed. It's more important to optimize mm. the throughput, how mm. many like jobs you can do. And, and in that case, like, like usually with parallelization, you have these kind of limits of how, how fast you can do stuff and how much you can parallelize stuff. And usually it's not worth the effort of doing too much parallelization. Of course, in some cases, you have big problems that can't be run on a single machine or they take too long. In those cases, parallelization is the only option. But in many cases, uh, it's better to run individual jobs that are uh, like individual jobs that are take longer, but you get more of them done. And it, it causes less yeah. headache with the CPUs, the reservation and stuff like that. OK. So of our remaining time, what should we do? Uh, I think we should move like should we have a Do small you... small break and then go to the arrays and gpus yeah okay um should we make the break until 06 or something slightly less yeah. than 10 yeah. minutes yeah okay so let's see mm. Okay, um, yeah, and you can use this time to mess with some of these examples more. Um, and if you're doing these kinds of things, it's okay to come to our garage and ask us for advice before you start yes. too much, because yes. really, like, maybe it's better to have someone help you get started rather than try to understand everything, because there's so many traps. Yes. Yeah, yeah I, I highly recommend uh, like uh, joining the garage when you think you need to do like something in parallel. Yeah. Okay, so see you in a bit.